That's right. You read the title. Crazy stuff is going with Psychultrist and the allegations, the incidents. There's not really any incident or allegation. It's just for a clickable title. But Psychultrist has come out with a tweet. A huge yap session regarding some things to do with the whole pausing and doing reactions. You know how I made the video before, right? You know how I said, Kaka TV, I'm quitting anime reactions, right? Also, shout outs to, shout outs to Michelangelo for making Dragon Ball Diamond content. I was just doing some research there. But remember this video? Basically, I swapped it and says, we're doing anime commentary. And I explained to you the thought process behind why it's better to pause and give you know, play-by-play -play analysis rather than just talking over the fucking anime or just waiting for the anime to finish and then having your comprehensive analysis at the very end. But Psychologist is going through the same thing where a lot of people, I think, are upset because he used to do more non- like offline reactions, very comprehensive videos, digging into the psychology of people. And if you don't know his channel, please go check him out. But let's read this tweet. One out of two, baby. <laughs> Meaning there's two posts of these. First, I want to acknowledge and respect the hard work of all content creators. Putting yourself out there takes courage, and creating genuine vulnerable content can be challenging. What I'm sharing here reflects conversations and messages I've had with other creators aiming to foster a more in-depth understanding of various approaches. The two approaches right now, again, is the whole offline, just no talking, uh, sorry, no, sorry. Yeah, pretty much no talking, you're just going, oh, oh my god, wow, oh my god, and you know, people that actually fucking pause to talk about the specific moments to bring on more conversations and discussions regarding the stuff that we enjoy watching. One thing I find fascinating is the contrast between emoji reaction, which I think basically is just something hype happens. Oh, right. Oh my God. Content and deep analytical content. I think that you should be able to do both of them. If you truly are a good reactor, I think that you should be able to do the emoji reactions, which is basically physical humor. When things are happening, you don't always have to say something. You can do something like, you know, look at the camera when such shit's happening, right? There's different things that you can do to kind of engage and entertain the audience without just yapping. That's called physical humor, which is basically emoji reactions. But if you're just only physical humor, it's kind of empty, you know? You should be able to do physical humor and also talk in depth, break down what is happening on the screen, enlighten your audience in case they're not paying attention, make them able to understand the show that they may not have been able to, but because you're now watching this in a, such a sweaty way, you break down this shit, you basically spoon feed the content, break it down in an easily, you know, consumable co in a way, be able to make like clever witty jokes, you know, like all of these things, I think is something that a reaction channel should be able to do. Both serve their purpose, and each has its strength. Quick, emotionally charged reactions can offer an instant dopamine hit, basically. Oh my god! No way! Perfect for viewers seeking quick validations or a lighthearted moment, right? Some battle shonen scene happens, Skuna versus fucking, I don't know, Gojo's fighting, and you're going, ha, oh, peak, peak, whoa, right? People want to see the hype scenes, and some people don't want to hear you fucking talk. They just want to see you move around and make stupid faces because that's the same type of reactions that they had. Nothing wrong with it. On the other hand, a deep analysis approach provides a more layered experience, connecting on an intrinsic level with an audiences who are looking for meaningful insights beyond the surface. Absolutely. And if you don't know, I've said this multiple times before, the entire reason that I even sought out doing anime reactions is because I was an anime reaction enjoyer. Quite often I watched these One Piece reactions to see specific moments of when I thought was super, super hype. One of the coolest moments is in Marineford where, you know, it's the three admirals that they're in. Luffy shows up in front of them. It's such a hype moment. Other moments it's like when fucking, it's like uh, Luffy's Conqueror's hockey activating. Everyone's saying, oh shit. So he has it too. Everyone else's reaction is there. And then I wanted someone to actually fucking talk about it rather than just going, oh, conquerors. And I thought that this reaction content, there's so much fucking views on YouTube, yet it's so fucking mid. As a viewer, my pain point was that these reactions are so fucking mid. So you know what? I decided I'll do it myself. I don't think that these dudes are doing anything spe like special. And I just thought like it was so stupid that these dudes could just make like my annual salary working as a software engineer, but they could make that shit in a month by just fucking pogging, watching stupid anime. And I thought, what an unfair life.
What an unfair world. Fuck it. I'll do it myself. So I did it. So I basically had these pain points. I understood that there was a market and a separate group of audiences that wanted more than just fucking, oh my God, and stupid making stupid faces. I want some motherfucker to talk about it. So I decided to offer the solution myself. Emoji reactions, especially those edited to show only the most dramatic moments, tend to focus on instant gratifications. Yes. And it's, um, it's pretty smart. I think that um, it is smart in the sense, like it, this is a totally separate audience, right? You're trying to, and, and there's a, and what kind of people want this kind of instant gratification? It's probably a younger audience. A bunch of stupid kids that have no job, no responsibility. All they have is time. And that demographic is also the most profitable in terms of ad revenue, I guess. Not really Patreon, but ad revenue on YouTube because, like, let's get real. Do you think that ReZero is getting the most views right now on YouTube? No. It's Bleach. Battle Shonens that cater towards a younger audience. That's where the big money and the big viewership is. And the more that you're able to make a meta, these emoji reactions, right? Editing it to show the most dramatic moments and capturing that market, it is brilliant, right? I'm talking purely business here. I'm not talking about whether or not you think these people are monkeys or fucking, you know, TikTok brained out and they can't appreciate good content. None of that matters. What I'm talking about is there's a specific market. It's a huge market. And these emoji edited content is very good on capturing that market. Which is great for some context, but analysis drives into the why and how, making each viewer an opportunity for growth. I agree. And again, the type of audience that I'm really trying to foster and cultivate, and I've explained it in this video, right? I don't want to cater towards stupid kids that only click onto specific parts of the episode reactions to see their favorite moment. I want people that actually can tolerate long-form content, can appreciate the in-depth analysis and commentary. But it's not just that. There's also the physical humors and the funny jokes happening too. And I'm trying to give you this full package and trying to cultivate an audience where they can sit down and appreciate everything. And most likely that audience is going to be a bit older. In terms of sustainability, longevity, and content creation, the more you cater towards kids, the faster you're just going to fall off because those kids are going to grow up and they're not going to watch the same fucking bullshit ch children content, right? But because I'm already caring to such, a, such an older, mature audience, I'm thinking not for the short term, but for the long term, like 10, 20 years down the line to be able to do commentary towards anything and people will still watch. But if you, if you keep only hitting, if you're only trying to capture that young market, that is fucking impossible. And it's a very, it's going to burn fast. And you're, you're going to have a lot of growth, right? A lot of these only Naruto channels, only Bleach, One Piece channels, you're going to grow fast. But the problem is, what happens after when you run out of that content? Are these people actually watching you for the things that you have to say? Or are the people watching you for these specific moments of hype moments just to see you make stupid faces? You'll quickly realize that many of these channels and why so many reaction channels get big and suddenly fall off out of nowhere? It's just go to those fucking most popular videos. All they've done is farm tourists by making opening reactions and other trending reactions, but they have no community, right? They have no core community, and that's why they cannot win this marathon. Don't get me wrong. I see value in emoji reactors. I do too. And this value is a very subjective thing. Who am I or who are you to say that this reaction content is good and that some other reaction content is bad? Entertainment is a subjective thing and people can find value in motherfuckers yelling and saying nothing or other people making three hour in-depth psychological analysis. It's all the market that dictates what value really is. Sometimes we all need that instant reaction to validate how we feel about a scene. However, I believe the role of content creation should be transformative, and that's what deep analysis offers. I don't necessarily think that emoji reactions, the physical humor during a moment, suddenly constitutes it to be not transformative. You've already transformed it because it's not just the fucking episode just playing, but it's rather you watching the episode and making some noise, making some physical humor. So I think that is still transformative, but what Eddie is here is trying to say is, and if I, I think I'm, maybe I'm misunderstanding is, there is a lot more to be had, much more transformations beyond simple 
sound effects, but to actually break down scene by scene and all the important things happening. The aim is not just to replay what's happening on screen, but to break it down, explore themes and bring new perspectives to light. Unfortunately, when creators don't bring fresh insights or merely monetize without adding value, it can feel less genuine. Definitely. I don't think it's an absolute, but the key word here is it can, not that it will, right? A big part of this culture of instant reactions come from edited content. Pre-recorded videos can be perfected to remove pauses and emphasize only the big moments. Yeah, again, right? You're trying to hit that young audience that only wants to see hype moments and you shouting during those moments. To edit the content when you're recording it offline, you can definitely min-max, you can definitely optimize for that specific audience which fosters a culture that sometimes overlooks in-depth discussions. Absolutely. And just like I said before, right? I think that people that only focuses on this type of shit, where it's just fucking just sound effects and making physical humor, they die off really quick because it gets boring real quick. There's a lot of kids, but throughout the next five years, I guarantee you a lot of these channels, they're not going to be around, but I will be. But the creators who do this live on platforms like Twitch, I have immense respect. Ooh, glaze incoming. Live streaming brings its own set of challenges. There is no take two. Exactly. I don't think that what we're doing is necessarily difficult, nor is it deep. We're just watching shows, bro. I'm not fucking doing neurosurgery. I'm not like a, like a fucking piano concertist, like fucking orchestrating like an orchestra or like delivering babies. No, I'm just watching shit and yapping. But there is a clear difference in quality and the difficulty when you're able to do this live. When you're doing this shit live, there is no take two. You can't fuck up. You also can't just procure these, you know, reactions hyper optimized for the hype moments to just pop off, you know, when hype things are happening for the kids. Everything is live. If you fuck up, you fuck up. You need to be able to watch what's happening. First of all, anime is not even fucking English. I got to fucking listen in Japanese. I got to read the subtitles. Not only do I have to read the subtitles, I have to look at what's actually happening visually to figure out any cues. Not only that, I got to entertain my chat at the same time. All these different things are way more difficult to do when reacting live versus offline. But I believe that because it's more difficult, that there is more value in it. I think a lot of people find value in this whole like um, experience of engaging with the streamer while reacting content. I, I, the thing that I notice a lot is um, couple channels or reaction channels where they're doing a lot of friends. They all do it offline, most, most of them. But the value that those kind of channels have is the fact that there's like this dynamic of multiple people that creates this sense of friendship or relationship that you as the parasocial viewer can self insert yourself into and feel like you, you're part of that friend group, right? And there's a lot of value for that. Me as a solo reactor, my basically goal is for not for you guys to self insert yourself into these friendship reactions, but rather you and I are watching this live at the same time together. So even though I'm doing this alone, it's this community and experience of doing it together, which kind of mirrors that value that's in those non-single reaction channels, if you know what I'm talking about. And I think there is something to be said about that. Like, like I think it's very difficult to round up the monkeys and make sure that they're, you know, behaving properly to make sure everyone's, you know, chill and we're having a good time while at the same time trying to make the best, make the, make the best reactions possible. Like doing this shit live again, it's not that deep, but it's definitely not easy either. And the interactions with viewers become a powerful part of the experience. I've seen creators like GOT Games, Kaka TV, ooh, Glaze, Pink Cube, the Glaze, and Nikolai TV, Glaze, skillfully build community engagement, fostering a space where reactions and discussions happen in real time with genuine connections to their audience. Yes, I think that, inter I, and I, like, um, I just feel like live reactions are such a better, well, who am I to say what is better? But in terms of what I'm good at 
and I talked about this more in depth in this video. The whole purpose of doing this shit live and having the analysis happen during what I'm watching, right, without pausing. And this is a bit different. The pausing shit is a bit different from, you know, doing it live. But the, I'm talking about how this whole live reaction shit and the way that I pause and do reactions, not only is it maximizing the skill set that I'm good at, it's also just objectively the best way to make money on YouTube since people will be watching throughout the entire fucking video rather than skipping to one specific section then fucking off, right? Because, like, I guarantee you, we're going to talk about this a little bit more later, but um, a lot of people say, oh my god, autosave! They're the goats! They have their full-length discussions at the very end. They're so informative and great, for sure. Right? They're a great channel. I'm sure they make great content. But if they showed you the analytics, I fucking guarantee you, no one... Not no one, but relative to the actual reactions, a significant portion of them do not stick around for the after discussions because monkeys are monkeys. And you can't change behavior expecting to do... You can't just do the same thing and expect them to change behavior. You need to change yourself and make sure their behavior is changed. Um, a specific example I'm going to be bringing up right now uh, is this. One second. I'm going to be bringing up uh, two separate reactions where I used to do basically old reactions versus new reactions, right? Actually, I think we can actually just view this video and just find it out for ourselves. Yeah, this specific thing, right? So this is the episode 12 reaction for Classroom the Elite. It's like a 37 minute, it's like a 38 minute video. But look at the engagement graph there. I do a huge comprehensive intro recap as well as an afterthoughts discussion. Guess what? People don't give a fuck. Most people do not care. They only care about the reaction content. I don't blame them, right? And in order to change that, what do you do? You make sure that the analysis and the reaction happen during the entire thing. See how the bar changes and people are actually watching throughout the entire video? Like, a lot of ignorant monkeys that have no understanding of how content creation is done say, Bro, just stop fucking pausing! Just play at the fucking end! Yeah, of course you're going to say that because you're not the type of people that's going to even watch the stuff at the end. You are a tourist. You are a brain-rotted monkey child that just wants to see an anime episode with someone else. You don't care about the commentary. You don't care about the analysis. But don't fucking then come at me and say you're doing it wrong. Like, you have no clue how this works. For those who appreciate deeper content, the downside can be that it's time commitment. Deep analysis isn't about quick hype moments. It's about forming a nuanced understanding of the show. And um, I think that um, what Ed's doing, and I can't, uh, you know, I can't say for sure, but here's what I, I've kind of felt. I think that um, there is a spectrum. I, I think that there is definitely a spectrum. Hold up one second. I can stop paying surrender. I think there's a spectrum in the different types of, like, a. Uh, audiences and the goal that I'm trying to hit. Let's let Microsoft Paint load just one second. Come on, motherfucker. Come on! Holy shit, MS Paint, you piece of fuck. Bruh. Jesus Christ. So, I think that there is a spectrum of Monkeys? Let me show you, let me show you. Monkeys are at this part of the spectrum. And then you have on the other spectrum... Pseudo-intellects. Yep. I, I think that there is a spectrum, right? Basically... These people, right, on this part of the spectrum, they just want 10-minute reactions. They want to see just the hype moment. They don't care about the commentary analysis. Nothing matters. I have one scene that I want to see from your reaction, and that's it. And I want to see you yell. That is the monkey audience. And on this side of the audience, it's the pseudo-intellects. They want hours and hours of analysis and yapping and shit. But... Remember, the average person, again, let's, let's, let's make a distribution graph. Let's look, let's, let's look at a graph here of basically population, right? 
You have like population of people. And you have IQ down here. All right? You have population and IQ. And what usually happens in this distribution... Fuck, come on. Let's select this part. What happens in these situations, right? Is... Are you fucking stupid? Is there Beyblade today? Do you not see me recording a fucking video? You should deserve a two-week vacation for this shit. You're a complete new viewer, though. So I can't really get mad that you don't even know the fucking rules. Don't fucking ask. Simply stick around and watch. And the moment you leave is when I start watching Beyblade. Fuck you. All right, going back to this. Look at this shit. I think that distribution graph is like this. Where you on both spectrums, there's less people. But most people are just over here. Most people are just a bunch of average idiots over here. And I'm definitely in this range too. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that I am smarter than you. I don't think that I'm better than you. I think that I'm pretty much in the middle of the pack, but the difference is that I'm more aware than you. A lot of people here think that they're fucking over here. Trust me, you're more like over fucking here. You're fucking dumb. The fact that you don't even know how dumb you are proves how stupid you are. But the reason that I bring up this graph and how the more, you know, average you are, the more people there are, it, this cor this kind of correlates to this, you know? There's more average people. And in terms of like, why am I saying all this? I'm talking about, you know, for those who appreciate deeper content, the downside is that it can be a time commitment. And I'm trying to tell you about like, not only is a time commitment thing because you're spending so much time doing yapping, are you really optimizing your time for content creation? And maybe it's not Ed's goal to optimize his time. Maybe his goal is to just make the best long form analysis he can. But to me, I want to really optimize my content so that I can hit both audiences, right? My goal isn't just to be here. I'm not trying to just say hype shit and just be here. I'm also not trying to be the most sweatiest because I hate these fucking people too. Most of the times, these motherfuckers are usually from the light novel community from like Mushoku Tensei, ReZero, Tensura, these sweaty fucking neckbeards that think they're so intelligent because they read ahead and they're so stupid and because they have no friends, they come to my videos and they try to spoil and they try to be acknowledged because they have, again, no fucking friends. What you want to be is like right over here, right? What you want to do is be able to round up both the monkeys and the pseudo intellects. Be able to make funny, witty humor jokes. Have the physical comedy, but be able to break that shit down and feed it to the monkeys so that they understand, but also appease the pseudo intellect so that they know that I actually understand the show. You know what I mean? My goal isn't to be the smartest. My goal isn't to be, you know, the most like know it all. No, my goal is to be the most entertaining and my definition of entertaining is being able to make sure that you understand what's happening when we're watching things together for me to break down the shit and literally spoon feed you the content, but at the same time, be witty and funny and be able to do in-depth commentary. That is my goal. And this is the optimal time that I figured out how to do. Like most of my reactions are the longest they can go is for like maybe an hour. Usually re-zero shit. And if there's really not that much happening, it can be about 30 minutes long. And the 40 minute is like a sweet spot. And that's like a very nice, um, time efficient way of making content compared to other people like Ed that may be spending like four or five hours on one single video. You know, I'm pumping out literally eight videos a fucking day because I have a workflow that's been heavily optimized to fit my goals. And I think it, it is definitely working. How do I know that? Well, don't take my word for it. All you have to do is go to Social Blade and check out this public data that you can see. I clearly have a win condition. I clearly know that my strategy is working and I continue to grow. So don't fucking tell me that I don't know what I'm talking about. Everything is public data. I've actually accomplished it over and over and again. I have a pattern of behavior of a strategy that is working for me. And this is pretty much the whole logic behind that. My channel's focus is to psychoeducate through detailed psychoanalysis not to gloss over complexities. Yes, you'll see some emoji moments, but if that's all you're after, this might not be the content for you. Our analyses are lengthy because they're layered, covering multiple perspectives, often revisiting themes to ensure understanding. Viewers from different backgrounds at various stages of life may need more than a single metaphor to grasp complex ideas fully. For sure.
and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's also nothing um, wrong with other people not liking his content because that's not what they're all after, right? And there's nothing wrong for the audience to stop watching Ed's content, and there's nothing wrong with Ed, you know, steering his content to fit a different audience, right? There is no fucking, uh, what's the word? Entitlement. He's gonna make content for the people that, you know, that he wants to make content for, and he'll create a community based on that. And if you just want this, that's fine. But you also can't get fucking mad at him and say, oh my God, I can't believe you're yapping so much. Fuck off. You can watch so many other people that makes content that suits your needs. Some might think that I hate on emoji reactors. Far from it. They have an important role in making people feel less alone. <laughs> <laughs> I respect all channels and love some like Symbol of Sanity, Autosave, and Tibu for creating a discussion-based reactions that enrich the community. Glaze. And another common critique I get is psychologist. You bring up sexual analysis and it's cringe. Well, discussing sexuality isn't just valid. It's critical in psychology. Talking openly about sexuality has allowed people to share experiences and ask questions in a safe space, reducing shame around these topics. I think this is a totally different tangent where some people might feel a little bit awkward about this kind of topic content, but I, I agree with this take. And this is the one out of two. Let's see some replies to this. You pausing and going in deep and analyzing everything is exactly what I love about your content. Especially when you bring out all the psychology related charts and the graphics. Here we go. Mr. John99BG proving that a market of people like this exists. Many people might say, stop pausing. You're talking too much. But just as many people, if not more, are content with it. And they often don't talk. A silent majority is content when people watch it and they're happy about it. They don't bother commenting. It's the super upset, angry people, the vocal minority, that's going to make this seem like a bigger deal. So always be aware that there is a market for this type of content. Odyssey mentioned Let's Go. So far, they're the ones who have this balance of being entertaining while still having sharp and deep discussions. <laughs> Odyssey is great. It's just... Bro, you have no fucking clue. You are, you are, you are in your little fucking well thinking that's, that's it. Like you have no fucking clue the amount of creators out there that's pretty much doing the same shit they are doing. Like if you are my fan, please don't tweet shit like this. I, uh, you think that like it, and I'm sure this person, it's just the stupid kid, right? They're glazing their favorite creator. Perfect. Amazing. Auto save. They make great content, but what they don't understand is the implications of like what these tweets may say because like when you say like oh this person is truly the one person that knows how to do this shit the best you then kind of like put other people's down so when you guys are glazing me on online don't fucking say shit like this okay it, word it in a way that the implication is gone let's look at two out of two regarding suggestions like wait until a scene to pause or shorten your videos again i told you exactly what's happening here right I explained to you, wait for a scene to pause, shorten your videos. You guys have no fucking clue how this shit works. These are just stupid children that are saying dumb shit because the content that they're seeing doesn't suit their needs. So they're just asking to just dramatically, just drastically change it. No, why would psychologist go out of his way to change his content for people that don't even enjoy his content? Why would he betray the audience that he's built up, the community he's built up towards this specific type of content to appease you who don't even like this shit? That makes no fucking sense. Here's my perspective. Live analysis captures the real-time thought process, making it more authentic. Pausing in the moment helps you dissect the scene before hindsight changes the initial interpretation. Absolutely. And here's the most mind-boggling shit, which is I think a self-report in a lot of people who criticize and, you know, uh, complain about pausing. The most stupid thing that I read is, bro, if you just stop pausing, you would get the answers that you questioned in the next minute. Guess what, retard? That is the entire fucking content. To be able to make predictions, to be able to work with what you got. And yes, that's the entire point. But the fact that you ask these stupid questions, you're basically proving that you don't even know what the fuck you're watching? You have no clue what a reaction is supposed to be. If you're just content with a motherfucker just sitting back and just observing, just consuming, you're just watching it. You're not reacting. How the fuck are you going to go out of the way 
to complain about people that's actually trying to make content to say you shouldn't be talking bro everything that you're asking is going to be answered the next minute it's like that is the most brain dead retardation that i see online and yes our videos are long but that's why youtube has pause and skip buttons and not only that because the videos are long we also make a lot more money i told i told you right just because a video is long doesn't mean you're gonna make a lot of money the whole video must be viewed and more people needs to, you know, get the ad revenue. That's why ReZero content makes a lot of fucking money. But because the way that I structure the videos now, doing play-by-play -play analysis, motherfuckers are actually tuning in to my discussions rather than these monkeys that only wants to see the reaction and fuck off, right? Think about it from a business perspective. This is the optimized way to do shit on YouTube. Viewers can take breaks as needed. My goal is to foster understanding, not to rush through complex themes. Another critique I often get is you pre-watch. <laughs> and pre-watch is the funniest shit because like, first of all, there's a lot of reasons why pre-watching is so cringe. When you say pre-watch, you're telling me that you are not intelligent enough to watch this stupid show, gather the evidence that they've shown us and make predictions yourself. The fact that you think that we pre-watched this, literally, it's a self-report of your intelligence. Not only that, the audacity. Like, do you think that I care about random children watching me on YouTube? Do you think that, like, I care about looking good to them, to look smart to them? You think that I would spend... Okay, and you think... And, and this is the funny shit. When I was working, like, fucking 9 to 5... And then come home when I had a full, you know, when I had a day job, nine to five, then come home, then fucking make reaction content from five to like 11. And then I have like two hours of free time before I pass out. Do you really think that I would spend that free time I have to watch this show, to pre-watch it so that I could be, I could impress you of all people? Like that blows my mind. You have no fucking clue. Like, like the audacity, the arrogance to think that I would spend my fucking free time investing into this shit just to fucking impress you. That's so stupid. And another thing is that often being wrong in predictions leads to even more funnier content, right? Being wrong is more fun than being right. So again, it's just the, pre the notion of pre-watch is so fucking stupid. But I'm sure some people definitely have, you know, I, I can't say for a certain, but... Some people may pre-watch to kind of understand what's happening, to be able to kind of, you know, make things make sense when they're watching it. I might have more concise points, but no, those are live analyses. We've tackled random shows on Twitch, demonstrating that the process is about real-time analysis, not scripted reactions. Finally, to those questioning the credibility of my analysis, yes, it's psychology-based. I reference peer-reviewed studies and evidence-based practices, and many in our community pursuing psychology degrees have found it helpful in their studies. Basically, just the whole approach of, you know, using his uh psychology background academia for his content that it is not fraudulent ultimately my goal is to make psychology accessible and relevant showing how anime and games are valuable mediums for exploring human behavior these are not just entertainment they're opportunities to connect people with psychological insights sometimes even encouraging them to seek professional help if needed so i'd love to hear from you what reactions or analysis channels do you enjoy the most and why are, are there any creators you'd like to see me collaborate with and that's pretty much it. Is there any more comments? To be honest, I like watching your reactions exactly because you stopped midway to pause and talk. Again, more silent majority actually coming out to confirm that this market exists. And again, if this market didn't exist, then why would I continuously grow more and more, right? Like clearly the audience exists there. It makes it more to me digestible. Like I just noticed I'm more likely to skip the whole analysis if it's at the end. Exactly, right? This is the exact same shit. You need to make the audience change their behavior by changing your content. This, you can't just do this shit over and over and expect people to fucking watch it. And I guarantee you, even people like Autosave, and they're probably not going to show you the fucking analytics behind the scenes. I guarantee you, maybe it's not as this drastic since they have a strong sense of community. But if you compare the relative engagement of the actual reaction versus the analysis discussion, it's going to be lower relatively. But I can easily watch through the video with how you do it. Well, I think the most out of reaction channels I watch, you're definitely one of the best. But amongst the others, I like to highlight reaction channels like Genreverse, who do some emoji reactions, but also provide interesting discussions every now and then. Again, I don't think that, like, just, like, you should be able to do everything. Like, this notion that you're only this type of reactor is stupid. If you truly are a reactor, 
Why can't you fucking make jokes and be able to do commentary at the same time? You should be able to hit the physical humor and you should be able to talk about the show, break it down and entertain the audience. Like that should be the base fucking minimum. But again, the standard for reactions on YouTube is so low because of how many people are doing this shit because they see how much of an easy hustle it might be. The standard, the bar for reaction content is so fucking low that me simply understanding the plot, me simply memorizing and remembering different things is enough for people to say that I'm the best reaction channel. I don't think I am, far from it. But again, what I'm trying to portray right now is just this shit quality, this garbage, just title, just so it's huge volume of garbage reaction channels that exist out there because, again, they just do this shit because they think it's a fucking quick money that they can get. Watching you has made me think about Boone doing something similar as a post-watch review. As someone who focused on patient histories and care plans, looking at key moments in anime and trying to encourage empathy by taking care of needs, sure, more inspiration. I thought you would collaborate with... Okay, sure, whatever. And that's pretty much it. Psychultrist has been... I wouldn't say backlash, but this is a tweet to inform those out there that there is a reason why he's doing this. There may be a lot of disgruntled YouTube audiences that used to watch him when he used to do the offline reactions and suddenly because he's doing this shit live, the format's changed so they're saying a bunch of bullshit. But at the end of the day, right, I can't tell, for, I don't watch Psychultrist content every fucking day. I can't just be like, yep, this is good, this is bad. That's for his audience and the market to decide. And if his formula is actually working, and he has consistent growth, then clearly he knows what he is doing and there is no need to change what he is doing. There's a lot of insecure, ignorant people who think that a reaction should be this specific way. No, I think that there's nothing wrong with doing just, you know, emoji fucking reactions without pausing. Go ahead. There's a lot of entertainment you can have either way, but don't blame the fucking content creator for specifically targeting an audience to build a sense of culture and community based on what they believe. And what we want to do is to do long form content. And if that's not what you want, you can fuck off. There's plenty of other channels out there that you can watch. Guys, if you haven't checked out Mr. Psychultrist channel, is he actually that active on YouTube? I know that he's very active on Twitch, but not so much on YouTube. Here's a link, please. Go check his channel out, and I will see you guys next time.